Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's Honey Water, and I wanted to talk about crochet crafts and minimalism. I have been a victim of a crochet injury, I think, or it could be for working with a patient. <laughs> Sorry, the loud noise, my neighbors. Or it could be from working with the patient. I have yet to determine the original source, but having this crochet injury has really caused me to sit down and reevaluate what am I doing and why am I rushing? Um, especially since I can't crochet at this moment, not safely. Um, don't get me wrong, I've tried other ways, but right now it just feels like I just need to take a step back and slow down and try to go through my yarn stash whenever I do recover. Um, I don't have a lot of yarn because I live in like a two by four apartment. I stay in the city um, or near the city and I stay in a studio apartment and uh, I don't have enough space here. And when I started this crochet hobby, it felt really great. And then I found myself doing the same things that I was doing before with shopping, except for it slowed me down a little bit because I'm making my own clothes. But basically, I just kept having to found myself obsessed, slightly, ever so slightly obsessed with buying yarn. And um, I just need to pump the brakes on that, too, because why am I buying so much yarn? Is it possible to be a craft person, a person invested in the craft and still be a minimalist? Do I need to have every ball of yarn that I see in every color and every every colorway and every fabric blend? I don't think it's necessary. And I think that consumerism hits us, at least it hits me, whenever I end up going to a yarn store and then I see it and then I have to have it. It's that same fix that I used to get with, yeah, it's that same fix that I used to get with shopping. First thing I want to talk about is time. With crochet, it is obviously faster than knitting. It's faster than Tunisian crochet, but that doesn't mean it needs to be a fast process. I, you, several people here, we watch crochet videos and a lot of them are like, how many hours can I, how many items can I crochet in 12 minutes? Or how many items can I crochet in 12 hours? Or in one week or in 24 hours in this fascination with can I call it binge crochet because you're just basically excessively crocheting for whatever thrill or whatever views you can get and it does more harm than good the harms that I can see that happens are like the mental stress you get turned away from the one hobby that brings you some mental relief and you feel pressure on yourself to do it. And then it also, also this quality suffers like tremendously than if you were to actually take your time and crochet. Now, if you've been a veteran crocheter, you know, I guess that part doesn't apply to you, but the binging, when you binge with the crochet, you're doing a lot of work in a short amount of time Heavy repetitive motion is not safe. Case in point, heavy repetitive motion is not safe. So I think it's really important that we just take our time and slow down. Yarn can be really cheap and you buy a lot of it and you think you're making a deal with yourself or you think you're getting a great deal by buying cheaper yarn but you're still spending in excess or you can be the person who only invests in high quality yarn. And with that comes what? More bills, more budgeting that you're probably not doing. Or maybe you are, you know. But like, like really, like take a step back and look at how much money you're spending on yarn. Especially if there's no recoup. If you don't have a yarn business, why do you have a whole case of yarn behind you? Is it for aesthetics? Is it to make you feel good? If so, like I invite you to find other ways to help you feel good. It's one thing to have a passion, but you don't have to obsess about the passion so much that it takes more space than what you have. Like if you have to upsize in order to make space for your passion, 
maybe you need to just, I don't know, you do what you do. Everyone does what they want to at the end of the day. But this, it's very easy to hoard all the yarn, all the different types of crochet. Are you making crochet projects that you actually like? Are you? So with crocheting, I found myself trying to just work on one project at a time. And then I would work on that project until the yarn frustrated me or until I was almost done and I did not finish. That not weaving in the ends, not finishing the sleeve or the sleeves, just like working up projects and then putting them down and then picking up others. And some of them, I'm not even sure what, I'm, what I plan to crochet. You can blame me and say, yes, uh, honey water, why don't you just keep track of your projects? I could do that. But my point is, why am I working on so many projects at a time? Complete something. Take your time. Don't rush to do the project and complete something. Why is that so difficult? It's like eating a meal and not finishing that last bite. That satiation that comes. Your, your body stops when you're naturally satisfied or content. And if you're treating crochet like a meal instead of like a snack, you might find yourself not finishing your projects because you're cranking out so much, you know? Um, so maybe start a project, come back to it, revisit it, like date your project, go on a time frame that you, okay, for today, I'm gonna spend this much time crocheting on this project. And I'm not gonna start another project. And then I'm gonna spend this amount of time on my project invite the craft slowly into your life instead of just taking a whole day to like binge crochet or binge knit or perhaps binge isn't the best word but that's the one I got right now um but yeah just take your time you don't have to not finish your meal maybe you can just make your meal smaller you don't have to not finish your crochet project and then feel bad because you have this box of abandoned crafts that you haven't been working on you can make either the project smaller or make the amount of time that you spend oh. <laughs> oh, living in the city is crazy man <laughs> what was I saying why not treat your crochet or your craft project like a snack instead of a meal you don't have to finish it to completion in one setting and then not be able to finish that last bite just do it a little bit at a time. You'll finish your project probably and you won't get tired of the crocheting. The project is always there. It will be there. But you won't always be. We won't always be here. So take the time away from crochet to enjoy other things in life. Go outside, breathe fresh air, spend time with your family and your friends, or do a puzzle. Just break up the monotony because you might get tired of it and you might not finish that last bite you might not finish that last stitch on your crochet project <laughs> um hmm practicality I found myself I really found myself trying to make trendy projects not a granny square I've been working on granny squares a little bit y'all know I don't feel I feel a certain way about granny squares anyway, but I found myself crocheting bralettes and trying to do tube tops and yes, it's cute and yes, it's nice, but it's only for one event and it's not practical. That's the same thing I was doing when I was shopping. I would buy clothes to go out in, clothes for certain events and not clothes that I would wear every day. If I'm not purchasing clothes that I wouldn't wear every day, why would I try to crochet clothes that I'm not going to be able to wear every day? There's a time and place for everything, but why am I spending so much try time trying to knock out projects 
that are only going to be worn once or not in practical colors that I would wear. I just like you would have a color palette if you're approaching minimalism. I think it's important to have a color palette when approaching crochet or knitting. Crochet colors that you'll actually wear, knit projects that you'll actually wear in colors that you'll actually wear. You don't have to force yourself to step outside of the box with these colors. If you just are someone who wears black and white or earth tones, embrace that and invest in yarns that are within your budget, hopefully of decent quality that won't unravel when you wash them and you'll actually wear them. I say this to you, I'm talking to myself, like I'm really talking to myself and maybe you can benefit from it too, but like I was making so many things in bright colors and I don't like, I don't wear bright colors like this. This is a bag, but I made a shirt out of this. This is the skirt I was working on when I injured myself, but this is more my color speed. It matches my skirt like Come on, and I'm probably going to wear this skirt a lot once I actually finish it, if I do, if I do, because <laughs> my finger needs to heal and I'm so ready to get back. Mm. Oh, you know what? There's more. Destashing. If you don't have a business when it comes to this crochet and knitting and other crafting things, once you destash, don't re-up. Buy the yarn that brings you joy. Buy the yarn that speaks to you. But most importantly, buy the yarn that you're going to use. Um, if you're not going to use that yarn, donate it. And if you're not going to use that yarn in like three months or six or or less, then if you have a receipt, you might be able to return it. That's what I did. And if you're not one to keep receipts, then if you shop at these fabric stores like Joanne and Hobby Lobby, you might be able to do like a order for pickup and that's a digital trail of your receipt. Easy. If you're someone who loses paper receipts, paper receipts kind of fade over time anyway, but if you buy for pickup, or online, oftentimes you can just bring it back to the store and trade it in or get your money back, you know? So I think it's important to really assess your your habits and your purchases, assess how you're going to move forward and have a game plan before you start buying yarn again or else you're gonna end up in the same, same old, same old. Same old, same old, and find yourself up to your neck in yarn, a crochet closet full of yarn, a yarn corner that's overflowing. You're going to be there again if you don't have a game plan. So make a game plan. Figure out your color palette. Figure out the type of clothes or items you want to make. Have space for that. Leave your projects visible so you can come back to them and come back to them daily if it's not a project that can be finished in one day and if it's a product that a project that maybe could be could be finished in one day but you'd be gone so fast you'd run the risk of injury treat that project like a snack instead of like a meal go slow the craft isn't going anywhere but you will no need to chase after it enjoy your life